In late August of 2005, New Orleans City Park was nearly wiped off the map by a catastrophe of unimaginable magnitude. But amid the carnage, we had a plan, and that made all the difference. At 1,300 acres, New Orleans City Park is one of the nation's largest urban parks and one of its oldest. The first parcel of land was acquired in 1854. The City Park Improvement Association, the entity tasked with operating and maintaining City Park, was established in 1891. The park has known good times and bad, periods of massive investment, such as during the Works Progress Administration in the 1930s, and periods of sustained disinvestment. It's filled with historic trees and structures, bridges, lagoons, fountains, sports and cultural facilities, and enough open space to provide a shady respite for the vibrant city it belongs to. It enjoys millions of visits each year. In the early 2000s, the park's board and staff saw the need to establish a new vision for the park, to make it a world-class facility by 2018, the 300th anniversary of the founding of New Orleans. So after several years of studies, surveys, focus groups, and community input, the park adopted a new master plan in March of 2005. Six months later, the city and the park nearly drowned. Immediately following the flood, and for some time afterward, the city and the state had so many issues to deal with and were unable to help substantially with the park's early recovery. It became very apparent very quickly the cavalry was not coming. The park was left to develop its own strategy. However, out of 150 full-time staff, only 23 were left to start the rebuilding process. Those 23 staff members developed a four-point recovery strategy. Clean up, open revenue-generating facilities, mount an aggressive fundraising campaign, use the updated City Park 2018 Master Plan to guide the recovery. With 90% of the park under floodwaters for days or weeks, the impacts were immense. We engaged FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers to do major debris cleanup so rebuilding could begin. We asked for and got enthusiastic volunteers, more than 40,000 so far, donating more than 200,000 hours of labor. As a traditionally self-supporting park, we had to generate income. Thus, repairing our income-producing facilities was paramount. That included Celebration in the Oaks, which was open for December of 2005, just four months after the disaster. The Botanical Garden also opened December of 2005. The Golf Driving Range reopened March of 2006. And the Amusement Park reopened in spring of 2007. For support, we sought out corporations, foundations, and individuals. And we held annual fund drives, special drives for trees and plants, and so on. We combined our newly adopted master plan with our disaster recovery plan. This impressive document gave us a fundraising advantage over other local entities because we could give foundations, corporations, and other funders confidence that their investment had a definite purpose in the plan. They could pick the projects that not only fit their mission and were important to the park's recovery, but were also in sync with the park's long-range plan. Our initiatives were designed to both benefit the community and improve the park's financial condition. With the plan, we operated not out of desperation, but out of determination. In time, the plan helped us seek greater operating support from the state. The state legislature gave the park 30% of a tax on slot machines at the local racetrack. That provides up to $2 million in annual funding. And a tax increment district was applied to the park, which allows the park to capture sales taxes normally paid to the city and the state. Our original plan was $115 million, but when combined with recovery from the disaster, the plan grew to $143 million. The park has raised $101 million toward that goal for projects completed, under design, or under construction. How important was the plan for our fundraising efforts after the storm? Let's hear from those involved in the process. I'm Robert Lupo, and I'm currently the president of the City Park Improvement Association and been serving on the board for over seven years. Well, after the catastrophe of the Outfall Canal failures in New Orleans and City Park being devastated, lost over a thousand trees in the first couple of days, it was, uh, it was so important that we knew that we at least had a plan for action. 
And as a result of plans that were made before the storm in 2005, this great master plan was something that we could use as a tool to go out and explain to the public and to donors how we were going to use the money that we so desperately needed. Well, when we went to the legislature and the community in general and the city and private donors, we were able now to sit there with a master plan that had already been developed and not say this is what we think we're going to do, but this is what we have been planning to do. The success that the park has seen, which historically is so different than the past probably five or six decades, is that people saw that they almost lost something that they didn't know the value of until it was gone. And so the whole, not only this whole community, but the whole nation, ASBE Fund, Trust for Public Land, institutions like that saw the need to come in and help. And again, as a result of having a plan that we could show them, this is where your dollars can go, we were able to be very, very successful very quickly. I'm Larry Schmidt, a director of the New Orleans Office of the Trust for Public Land. And uh, shortly after Katrina, the Trust uh, thought about what is it that we need to do to help the city of New Orleans recover? And frankly, we discussed building a new park, but as we began to see the devastation in our city, and especially the devastation in City Park, we quickly realized that our investment would be better spent helping our beloved City Park come back. And uh, frankly, it was uh, the fact that City Park had just recently completed a master plan that really uh, aided us in choosing this particular spot for, uh, for our two and a half million dollar investment. Um, you know, some people call it luck, some people call it strategic thinking. Uh, I call it good management that City Park had thought uh, long and hard and that had a, a master plan in place not knowing that Katrina was coming, just a master plan for their development. So it goes to show you, you never know when you're going to need a master plan, but it was especially critical to City Park and to TPL and to our city that this plan was in place after Katrina and allowed for very quick decision making about where to invest and what kind of improvements were needed in the in, park. Um, in this beautiful redevelopment of this 50 acre site known as Big Lake. So I am a big fan and a big supporter of master plans and uh, encourage all parks to take that up and make it a part of their uh, strategic thinking. The spirit of the park is back and even stronger than before. And the plan was a major catalyst. Here's what we've done so far. Oh, 